All right, guys, welcome back to another one of my videos here. And today we're here to talk about my Logitech wheel that I just got. You know, I've been playing a lot of PlayStation VR 2, like you guys know. And I kind of miss being able to play VR racing games in VR because I actually used to have a setup with a wheel and stuff like that. And I got rid of it for the lack of, uh, you know, room and stuff like that with the way my old game room was set up. But now, as I told you guys, I have a game room tour coming up this Friday. Things have changed everywhere, so I have a little bit more room. So I decided to get back into that because I love American Truck Simulator in VR, Euro Truck Simulator, uh, Project Cars 3 on PC and stuff. And now I really started getting into PlayStation VR 2 with GT7. And I hope we get more racing games on the PlayStation platform. And I've been having a ton of fun with that. And I was playing it with, with, a, with a controller like the rest of us. And I kept hearing how much better it is with the wheel, which obviously makes sense. And I was like, you know what? I really need to get back into playing racing games in VR. And... Even though I have a wheel on my arcade machine, that's not something suitable that I can use on my on my PlayStation or on my PC and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? It's time to invest into a nice setup so I can play VR racing games and just racing games in general. Because I love Forza Horizon and, and some of the other games on PC as well. And I was like, you know what? It's that time. So today we're talking about a couple of different things here. We're talking about the wheel itself, how I got the Logitech Pro wheel talk about my experience with that we're going to talk and, that, and this is coming from somebody who's a little bit more of a noob when it comes to you know wheels and racing games and stuff like that so this is not like a review from a sim race so this is a review from somebody who just loves racing games in vr and just loves casually playing 2d racing games and stuff like that that's where this is coming from when you guys take a watch take a watch of this video but we're talking about the wheel the pro wheel we're talking about the pro pedals and then we're talking about the actual um play seat that i got to, the you know to put the whole thing together we're going to be talking about that the play seat trophy and a little bit of a comparison of what i feel compared to my regular thrustmaster tmx wheel that i have on my arcade racing game which is substantially cheaper than what this thing is uh just to give some comparison and what i think about hey is the experience that much better so let's go ahead and get into the video gaming tech eating brekkie is the gaming tech going for a brekkie is the gaming tech gaming tech is the gaming tech all right guys so let's look at an overview of the chair first and talk a little bit about it so this is a logitech g edition of the play seat trophy as you guys are looking at here so this is something that i decided to get because if you're going to get a wheel and we'll talk about the wheel here in a minute if you're going to get a wheel like this you need to get a sturdy mount you can't be using like you know those those wheel bases that are like a hundred bucks or something like that for something like this because then essentially you're not going to be able to, you know, the wheel's going to be shaking all the time and we'll get into that. And it, it's just not going to hold because, you know, obviously the wheels are going to be more powerful than the seat you're putting it on. So for a wheel like this, which is a wheel, a, a direct drive wheel, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you need something that's sturdy and stuff like, that, stuff like that. And I think this is the perfect combination if you get the Logitech wheel, if you want to save space and stuff like that and don't want to get like a full cockpit or something like that and you want something that can easily be moved. It doesn't fold or anything. You can obviously take the chair out, but it doesn't really fold very well. But at least it moves really easily. This is something that I could easily take and leave right here, which is what I do most of the time, but if I was going to play VR or something like that, because this is my VR space, that wasn't a racing game, then I would just take this and kind of push it over to the side and not have to worry about using it. Um, so it makes it really easy to move around, but then you also get the best of both worlds because this thing is built really, really solid. So let's start with the chair first here. So this chair material is really nice and soft. They did a really good job here with the way that this material feels. It really feels comfortable. Me and my wife sat in here. We both agree how comfortable it is. Obviously, it's really easy to put together, but it's not an actual physical chair. Some of these things that people get are actually physical chairs that are in there. As you can see here, this is more of a fabric that is actually going in between here. So you can see that it's the fabric that goes over the actual, um, you know, uh, chair that actually is here but it is really really comfortable the, the, the fabric material is really nice to sit in it really grips it really well and it doesn't feel cheap or anything and it really holds you there really really nicely and i have a really fun time you know sitting in here and and feeling comfortable and stuff and it really makes you feel like you're in like a racing chair even though it's technically just fabric even though um you know you would expect it to be a chair with most of these things but this is really cool and really really comfortable and i really really like you know, sitting in here and, and playing on this seat. The other thing we're going to talk about, of course, is how comfortable or how easy this was to put together. So this only took me about an hour to put together. It came in a really big box and uh, everything is held together. Uh, and these this thing here, first of all, I think it looks really, really nice. I love the way that the Logitech G logo and the blue 
uh, accents with the actual gray and black I think look outstanding. It matches the the wheels and the and the base really well. As you can tell, this has blue accents in it as well with the pedals and stuff, and it just matches the whole entire kit perfectly. Like I said, and it was really easy to put together. I did it by myself in an hour, uh, about, and uh, everything was put together. It was really easy, and uh, you know the wheel goes on there really nicely and really firmly so do the pedals there's some adjustability as well you can make the wheels higher if you want to as you can see here you can put it higher or lower uh, you can manipulate this wheelbase too as well if you want to higher or lower or tilting it towards you uh, either way you want to do it and then you know you can see the back here how it has true force and uh, you got the power cord you got the usb cable that goes into the um you know playstation 5 or pc and then of course you also have the pedals that go up to here as well and that's what i have and it does come with these little straps that you can at least strap this to the side that way it's easy and then of course the power cable plugs into power and then uh you know you can use it on your ps5 or uh, the wheel that i got is playstation and pc so i can use it on ps4 ps5 or playstation or sorry ps4 ps5 and the pc so i can use it on any one of those ones that i actually want to so overall this thing is sturdy as heck like this does not move this is made really really well really durable can't even like as you can tell i'm like shaking it it's not flimsy at all uh you know i it, it, it feels outstanding you can't really ask for anything better yes it's pricey of course but you definitely get what you pay for i mean this thing is i've had other wheel stands before and this thing is built like a tank granted of course it's the most expensive one i've ever bought but it's amazing and it's exactly what i was looking for where it doesn't take up that much room uh, but it's still really sturdy, really comfortable, has a really nice seat, and I can move it away when I'm not using it and put it kind of in the corner really, really easily because even though it is really sturdy and, and you know, really solidly built, it does really drag really easily on the floor, on the floor or, you know, isn't super heavy that you can't move it around. So let's go ahead and now talk about the wheel here as well. So the wheel and the actual pedals as well. This is the Logitech Pro Wheel. And these are the Logitech Pro pedals. Now, for comparison's sake, let me show you what I've been using this whole entire time. So on my arcade machine here, this Mario Kart arcade machine that I have, I actually have a Thrustmaster. This is the Thrustmaster uh, TMX Force Feedback wheel. So it does have Force Feedback. And then I actually use a Logitech uh, with an adapter for connecting it to a PC, the Logitech uh, shifter there as well, and the Logitech, or sorry, the Thrustmaster pedal sitting down there. Now, I've been using this for the arcade machine uh, for the last uh, year or so, and I think it's been really, really good. Uh, I think it's been fantastic. I have a lot of fun with it. The force feedback in it uh, is good. Obviously, the whole entire wheel shakes on this base, and it moves a lot. Um, sometimes it even comes off the base a little bit on the wood, and I have to reclamp it down because of the force feedback, depending on the game. Um, but the pedals work well, the shifter works well, and the Thrustmaster wheel works well, uh, you know, on the, on the arcade machine. Obviously, the majority of the games that I used to play on here and I still play on here are usually arcade racers, uh, you know, uh, whether it be from arcades or some of the arcade racers on steam or stuff like that, that that's kind of how i play them and it's been a really fun experience and still is when i play this machine what i was looking for on this wheel here is i kind of just wanted to you know buy a wheel that i knew i could use and not worry about like in a year being like hey i'm gonna want an upgrade i'm not the biggest you know sim racing fan believe it or not like i talked about in the intro video um where I would say that like oh i need the like you know the best of everything and i know all about sim racing and stuff like that what i really do like though is vr racing uh, and that's why i got this whole setup here because with that arcade machine over there i couldn't just upgrade that wheel and then make that my main platform to play racing games because i can't really play vr over there because my main pc of course is right here in front of me and it's nowhere near that arcade machine and that arcade machine has its own dedicated pc so it, it would have just been a hassle to figure that out so i was like you know what this is my main pc this is where my main hardware is this is where i have my 4080 and everything this is where i do my vr gaming that's where everything is so why not actually you know get the playstation 5 and, and i have it right here and get the best wheel i can get to you know for vr and for sometimes playing you know forza horizon 5 on this monitor over here as well and stuff like that uh, on this pc so i decided to do that and i was like all right let's go let's let's see what out what's out there and what people are saying is a really good quote-unquote higher end entry level wheel which is what i was looking for and this is the one that i kept seeing because of the two things one how really nice this wheel feels and how great the pedals actually feel and all that kind of stuff coming from a you know g923 or that thrustmaster which are kind of on the same 
you know, wavelength there as far as pricing and stuff like that. And this being a direct drive wheel and having true force feedback. So the first thing we're going to talk about is direct drive wheel. Now, again, I'm a newbie when it comes to this stuff. I'm not like a hardcore sim fan. If you came to here for this review, this is just my experience from somebody who loves VR and loves VR racing and just loves playing some racing games in general on PC, like Forza Horizon 5 and stuff like that. And the direct drive, what really stands out is when I actually use direct drive, and you guys will see that when we get into the gameplay, there is no sound at all. Like on my other arcade machine there, when there's force feedback, the whole entire wheel is shaking and it really makes a lot of noise when you hear that force feedback. This, you feel the force feedback, but it goes into the wheel the way that direct drive works and you just feel it all over. And on the actual base as well with the with the with the uh, true force you actually feel some feedback kind of going up and down the actual chair with the way that this thing sits on here it's just fantastic when you're playing a vr racing game and it's quiet as all hell and it has 11 newtons worth of power and i don't know how many of you guys can compare to that but that's pretty goddamn powerful as far as force feedback and you could definitely feel the impacts when you're playing racing games and stuff like that um and what's really cool is that some of the games actually support something called True Force, which is here on the back here. And True Force basically just adds, if you guys are familiar with things like butt kickers and stuff like that, which I have on my racing machine over there, I do have a butt kicker installed down there. Basically, that's kind of what Logitech is trying to do. It incorporates itself with certain games, and then it takes things like, oh, I know, I, I know you're above gravel, or I know you're on the grass, and stuff like that. And it kind of gives you feedback based off of that, so it makes you feel like you're going over grass, or you f feel like you just got into a car crash and stuff. And... True Force is essentially that. It's kind of like trying to add a butt kicker into this and, and kind of work in there. And for the games that do work, most of them do work really well from the ones that I've tried. It is really cool. GT7 on the PlayStation 5 is one of the ones that do support True Force, which is why I got it. Because obviously GT7 was the main game that kind of got me into this whole ecosystem of trying to get a racing wheel because I'm having so much fun and I wanted to take it to that next level with my PlayStation VR 2. And... So the wheel is fantastic. The force feedback is great, especially with games that support true force. If they don't, then they just have regular force feedback, of course. And the direct drive, just how quiet it is, how impactful the force feedback is, 11 newtons of power. It's just crazy. And the wheel is really nice and smooth. As you can see, it has a ton of buttons on it. It has the side, uh, you know, it has all everything that you could want. It has all these buttons over here, uh, obviously formatted to the PlayStation. Enough buttons. It has a little joystick here. Everything about it feels really nice and premium and the leather material on the actual wheel. The pedals here, as you can tell, what's really nice is that they come with three pedals already pre-installed. Uh, and you can move these around in any way you want. Uh, you can see that they're kind of... You can either remove one of these if you want to, if you just want to have two and you don't care about having, you know, three pedals on here, you just want two, you can do that, uh, which is really nice. So you can just uncork these right here uh, using the, the tool that it came with, take this out or move it from one direction to another, whichever way you want to do it. And they also have this pressure sensor, uh, you know, brake. So you can actually, as you can see, I have to put a lot of force to actually hit the brake here. That can you can adjust that a little bit and stuff like that. But you can see this one's much easier. This is obviously the you know the go pedal, and this is the other one here. You can see that it's not as tight as this one. This one actually has the braking, like you actually feel like you're braking and have to put some force into it, which I kind of really like. Um, so there's that as one. It feels fantastic. These pedals blow away any pedals i've ever used of course they blow away the pedals that i used over there on the arcade machine as well these things feel great you can tell how premium they feel uh when you hit the pedals and stuff like that and how smooth they are how well they work just everything about this just feels really premium you would expect that because the the pedals themselves cost 350 dollars just for the pedals uh, i did get a discount off of them uh using you know a code i, I believe i paid uh 280 for the pedals instead of 350 which was a great deal and they're fantastic guys uh i never felt pedals this good i think this is a great pedal system with customizability that you can manipulate the pedals and take out what you don't want or move you know you want the gas over here you want to move them around you want the gas on the left you can do whatever you want and the pedals just feel really really premium and uh you know really nice and you can remove these really easily when you need to change the springs out it comes with two springs of extras you can just easily remove these push these out and get them right in there really quickly so they really made the customizability really nice and then of course the actual wheel itself the wheel is supposed to cost um a thousand i got the wheel for 850 with the discount so that was a, a lot cheaper and then of course the actual plate seat here was 600 altogether which i did get a discount on that as well paid a little bit less but I think the whole overall package of this thing is fantastic. The wheel is great. The pedals are fantastic. Better than anything I've ever used. And I love how comfortable this is and how 
this is why you need a pedal a stand this well like i said with the direct drive features in the true force this thing is going to be shaking a lot 11 newtons of power is going to be insane so you can't be putting this on a cheap 100 hundred dollar stand and get like a thousand dollar wheel you're, you're cutting yourself short if you're going to spend this much money on a wheel and the actual pedals you need something that's actually going to withstand it and like i said i think this is the perfect combination for people who don't want to have like a full-on racing like motion platformer or something like that i think this is a fantastic combination to kind of have both and it's easy to move away when it's not being used all right guys so here we are with gt7 as you guys can see using the wheel you can of course use the wheel to you know use the joystick that i talked about to manipulate through the settings as you guys are looking at here and obviously I'm using the PlayStation VR 2 headset. Let's go ahead and just show you a quick race here so I can talk about the feel of the actual, you know, vibration and everything that I talked about uh, while we go through here. So I'm not an expert at this game, so don't be surprised if I do terrible uh, because that's just how it works. I don't even have a car suited for that one right now. Got first in that one last time. Um, let's see. Can't do that one. Let's just do this one here. So as you can see with GT7, for those of you guys who don't know, you're, you're looking at a 2D screen almost the whole entire time through the menus and stuff like that until you actually get into the race. So right now you're seeing the 2D screen and then you're looking at everything. You manipulate your settings and then when you hit start, it kind of loads up. And then you start looking at a 2D screen right when you get here. But then when you get to that two second mark, boom. I'm in the car. Look at this thing, guys. I'm actually in the car here, and there we go. I'm hitting the actual uh, gas. I'm going slow as hell in my car. Actually, I just realized I should have chosen another car. We're never going to be able to beat these guys. Uh, hold on. We're going to have to go back to the main menu here and switch this out. So let's try this again here, and let's go ahead and change the car. That's a lot better. So let's look at what we have here. See what we're actually going to take out. Um... We got a Mustang here that we can use. Actually, we got my Tesla, which would be perfect considering for those of you guys who don't know, I have a Tesla uh, in real life. Oh, but it can't be over 550, so can't do that. So Mustang it is since it's under 550 because uh, the Model S. Yeah, let's go ahead and try this one here. So this will be a lot better. We can actually race. We were going like two miles an hour that whole time when we were trying to start. Keep your foot on the brake until it starts. And boom, let's go. There we go. That's much better. Look at this Mustang that we're in here. And this Mustang looks fantastic. Uh, just driving in here. GT7 just in VR is just on a whole nother level. I never want to play GT7 on a 2D screen ever again. Uh... It looks fantastic in VR, being in this car right now. Why would you ever want to play it in 2D again? Unless if you're just a graphic snob and you want to play it on your OLED 75 inch, but I'll take the PlayStation VR 2 version with how fantastic it looks any day. Ran right into that car. Oh, that's fantastic. Told you I'm not that good at the game. I'm still practicing. Like I said, I haven't been a huge sim racing fan back in the day. Uh, VR is what kind of got me more into sim racing. But as far as like 2D, I, I'm usually more of an arcade racing fan than uh, than anything else. But uh, you know, sim racing has got, uh, VR has got me more into sim racing. It's the first time me driving the Mustang too, because I just got this car recently. I've been driving the RX-8 a lot and the Tesla, so I'm trying to get a feel for this car too. No, don't crash. No, 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 no. There we go. But yeah, this looks fantastic. The wheel feels great. I can feel the rumble uh, in GT7, um, you know, on the wheel and stuff like that. Uh, when I crash and when I'm doing certain things, when I'm going over the, the, the uh, grass area or when I go over a spot I shouldn't be going over. Uh, like I did before, you can feel it all on the wheel, and you could feel, you could see, guys, how quiet the wheel is because you obviously aren't hearing anything right now while watching this video. And if you were using a regular wheel that wasn't direct drive like this one, which is why this wheel is so expensive, it's because of the direct drive, because of how much better the force feedback is. 
and we're gonna crash. Yep, felt that on my headset with the VR2 headset, and I also felt it on the wheel itself. But this is so much fun, even as a person who doesn't do sim racing all the time, this makes racing that much fun. We're gonna spin on again, all right. Yep, like I said, I gotta practice with this car, I gotta practice in this game in general. But this is how you play GT7, in my opinion. It definitely takes the, you know, the experience up a notch playing with a racing wheel like this, looking through the mirror up there uh, for cars coming on your window and stuff like that, looking at this. It's just so much fun. See this car behind me. Hey, I know this song that's playing. Jamming. One more lap, here we go. The music in GC7 is fantastic. Fortunately, it looks like we're not going to be able to get over the third place. I don't know why I wasn't breaking. I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. Definitely going to... Oh, we're going to spin out. Yep. That, that, that was my fault though and now we're definitely not going to get more than uh more than the worst place we're in uh but that was 100 percent my fault because i didn't stop and break when i told you to yes i'm still using the on road telling you when to break uh because like i said i'm still getting used to this game i never really played gran turismo until i got vr so still spinning out on the same exact corner i gotta practice real hard definitely not doing very well but it's all about good fun like I said, I'm learning how to play the game, learning the lines, since I'm usually coming from arcade racing, but I love playing on this wheel. Uh, this wheel makes the game so much fun, the, the, and the pedals are just fantastic. We can at least pass this side. Come on now. At least get back in fifth place. At least we can pass it. But yeah, love looking at this. Look at this. The graphics, fantastic. Being inside a vehicle. This is how you play. So much fun. Even though I'm pretty bad. Fifth place I still think is better than the last time though. I'm pretty sure last time I got like 14th. So it's still an improvement from the first time I played this track when I got 14th place. Or if you guys saw that on the, on the map before. So, still better. And then of course you see the, the replay and stuff if you want. But we can exit out of here. Uh, this looks fantastic. Like I said, the seat is really comfortable. As you guys are seeing me, I kind of sit on here now. Uh, how, it, like, you know, this this material here just kind of foams to your body and stuff like that. It, it, it feels really nice. Love the distance of the wheel, as you're seeing here. And the pedals fit me perfectly. Obviously, there's an adjustability on this thing that I forgot to talk about. You can move. You can make this stand a little bit wider if you need to, like distance from the actual pedals. I have it on medium. You can go up to large, so you can make this expand a little bit more. You can't adjust the height or anything, so this is the height that it needs to be as you guys are looking at here, so I can kind of touch the ground here. So it's only a few inches off the ground, uh, but which is why it's perfect for VR because that's what I'm going to be using this the most for. I love playing GT7. I love playing American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator on PC. Uh, that's in VR. I love playing, you know, Project Cars 3, even though a lot of people hate that game uh, because it's nothing like Project Cars 2, but as more of an arcade fan and as somebody who's just getting into racing games with this stuff, <laughs> that game is a little bit more forgiving, so it's, it's even more fun to play, and I think the graphics are fantastic on that. So let's go ahead and... Uh come up with my final thoughts now all right guys i hope you guys enjoyed that video over an overview of the chair the wheel the comparison of my original wheel the pedals and of course some gt7 gameplay to give you guys an idea of what that experience is actually like playing gt7 and i gotta tell you playing gt7 with a wheel uh which is probably not a surprise to most of you guys is fantastic and it's a much better experience than playing with a controller the immersion goes up that many more notches and with this wheel, if you have the cash to be able to afford it, you know, you don't have to. If you're only going to play GT7 and you're never going to play any other VR racing games except that, then obviously this wheel and this whole setup is probably a little bit overkill unless if you just have that much expendable cash. But for me, I love other racing games in VR already on PC like the American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator and 
Project Cars 3 and a set of Corsa and all those other ones that are out there as well. I played and own a bunch of those and I love playing those in VR and playing it with a wheel is that much better. So because of that, I wanted to invest in a wheel that I was going to have for a really long time. It kind of had all the standard features and I wanted a wheel because a lot of people were talking about it with Direct Drive that I talked about there in the overview because Direct Drive makes that force feedback even better than regular force feedback with how powerful it feels, how not only how powerful it feels, but how quiet it is and how detailed the actual force feedback feels. And it definitely does feel that way, especially with games that are set up and work with this wheel specifically that had that true force technology that i talked about when all of that is coming together in games that support it gt7 is one of them uh it, project cars 3 is one of them uh and it just feels fantastic playing these games that you know support all, the, all those features on the wheel and the pedals and it's just a great overall package like i said I, I can move the thing out of the way really easily on the rug like i just moved it out of the way before to, to record a video and it's really easy to just manipulate around because of how easy it slides on my carpet uh, which makes it easy to tout around even though it can't fold or anything. So you're going to definitely need to have room for this thing. But um, it's so comfortable to sit in. The wheel feels fantastic and so do the pedals. And racing games feel great. The only notch that you need to realize is if you're going to use this in a combo like me. Like I use it for VR racing games and then I just sit in that coxie and I could be all the way back there. Just kind of put my VR headset on and be good. But sometimes I want to play on this PC behind me as well like you guys are looking at here. And sometimes I want to play that game, and I want to be able to experience that game uh, in 2D. I don't always want to play VR racing games, and I want to use this wheel. You could push this wheel, uh, the seat all the way up here, which is what I've done. Obviously, the screen that I have here being a 42-inch is a little bit further back than uh, I would want it to be if I was using this, but it does still work. I, I, I kind of can still see over my regular desk. It still just works. It does work at a regular desk level. It's just that you're looking a little bit higher. It's not like directly in front of you. You're angled, you know, looking a little bit higher. But it still works perfectly fine. And I love playing on this 42 inch. And if I ever want to get really into it and want to make a day out of it, I can move this screen and kind of put it at the edge of my table here instead of all the way in the back. And then I'll, I'll really be right in front of it, you know, face to face when I'm playing 2D games. So I kind of use it in a combo. Uh, I use it in, in VR mostly, which is the main reason I got it. Uh, and then I sometimes use it in 2D games like this. Uh, but when I do my arcade racing games and stuff like that, I usually tend to use my uh, arcade racing machine over there because everything is just perfectly seated in that point of view. And I have all the arcade racing games set up on that wheel, and I still get the fork feedback, and everything just works great over there. So for this, VR mostly, and 2D games like you know that are really powerful on PC like Forza Horizon and stuff like that, when I want to get serious and use that. But with the caveat that it's a little bit lower because of the way that the seat and the adjustment is on here. You could, of course, take the wheel and just mount it on your desk, even though I wouldn't recommend it if you're using in the full power of that thing or it's going to rattle your whole entire desk. But um, I use it in both combo and it works great sitting over here and, and just looking up a little bit is not too bad at all. It's not like I'm being blocked from being able to see the screen, so it does work in this setup for me. So, guys, that is everything I wanted to tell you guys about this wheel. If you can afford it and you want a setup like this and you want to get into GT7 and PlayStation VR 2 and other racing games, this is fantastic, and it's definitely the best wheel I've ever used. Of course, there's better wheels out there that cost even more than this one does, but I'm really, really happy with this wheel. I couldn't imagine needing anything more for me being more of a casual VR racing person and VR sim racer. Uh, this is fantastic, and I can't wait for people to come over and experience this for themselves when I have friends and family over. So, guys, if you guys have any questions about anything you guys have seen, as always, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Until next time.